the developer of the building is 7085 Partners LLC, which is JS Eisenstein, which is somewhere in with, with the audience. And the construction company was Times Time Square. Um, uh, the building is located in the intersection between 48th Street and 8th Avenue. And as you can see, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, as you can see, the actual construction site is this V-shaped portion with this lay, which is became a, a courtyard. So the site was very limiting, limited in terms of square footage, and it has two frontage, one in 8th Avenue, the which is about 23 feet, and in 48th Street, about 16 feet and 8 inches. Um, the entry to the residential lobby was located in 48th Street. It's uh, the entry with the seating area, and uh, it's, it's a waterfall uh, uh, as a focal point before you go to the elevators. Service entrance is from 8th Avenue, and then we have a portion of the floor for commercial space uh, with access to this courtyard in the back. Perfect for a restaurant. <coughs> Um, the assembly of the, of the site uh, was composed by four lots, which we had the air right from. Um, and unfortunately, our client was not able to acquire the corner lot, which created a problem for the building because uh, we knew that this wall throughout 43 stories was going to be a blank wall. And it was a very big challenge for us to treat it as a architecturally, we, should sh we show you uh, how we did it. But uh, naturally, this, this face of the building became the, the area where the core uh, was located and also gave the opportunity to the engineers to put a shear wall in this direction, among other ones in the perpendicular <coughs> direction. Uh, from the third floor to the seventh floor, which is the podium of the building you see here, we were able to put uh, four units. And we run with the problem of the depth was about 80 feet from front to back. We have a courtyard, which is about 30 feet to the, to, to the property line. So these depths in, in residential buildings becomes a problem in most cases because uh, it's too deep. So what we created here is uh, we did these floors with a higher, fl higher floor to ceiling, and we created like a loft type of apartments where we have a, in, uh, a sleeping alcove uh, about three feet uh, higher than the living room so that you overlook and get ventilation in air from, from the window in the living room. So these are like a studio apartments, these two, these three. And then here where we have the, the right depth, we have a one bedroom apartment. At the eighth floor, we are forced to set back 10 feet in 8th Avenue by zoning. So that reduced the area of the footprint to less than 3,000 square feet. So this is the, unique, the only floor that is about 2,600 uh, square feet, and our core is about 570. So as you can see, the efficiency on these floors is very low. You know, most residential buildings, we're trying to uh, to achieve about 85% or even more. In this case, we, we were getting about 80%. So what we did is, uh, when we reached the ninth floor, we can't deliver the building about seven feet by 40 feet over the existing building to recoup, recoup the, the, the area that we lost by setting back the building and try to maintain a total area of 3,000 square feet per floor. Uh, then we, at that point, we, we were, uh, we, we have windows, the legal ventilation in this direction because we had the air rights for these two parcels. So we have a three bedroom, three one bedroom apartments in this location. And uh, the, the views are spectacular, you know, looking west <coughs> and south and some in the east. Again, this, this wall became a problem because we are allowed only 10% of uh, light and air. So we ha we, what we did, we returned the, <coughs> the windows in the corners, and we created a window up for the kitchen here. 
from the 31st floor to the fourth second floor is pretty much the, f the same footprint. Uh, what we did is we introduced a two bedroom apartment and uh, the other two apartments, you know, they are typical. And the last floor, which is the 43rd floor, became a, <coughs> a penthouse apartment, which is a one apartment per floor. We, we, uh, we tried to uh, take advantage of the views uh, looking west because looking west from uh, 8th Avenue, uh, most of the buildings are uh, about six stories in high, so you have pretty much three uh, view corridors uh, to the river. So this apartment happens to be a three bedroom apartment plus a library. So you have a living room, dining room with an open kitchen facing west, then the library and the master bedroom facing east. This is the building as today, and this is the contest in the neighborhood. Um, it's a 43 story, it's about 122 <coughs> units. Most of the units are one bedroom apartment. And these are some of the pictures of the progress of the construction. Uh, the building actually, this is a 23 feet frontage that we have in 8th Avenue. And uh, the challenge, uh, there were three challenges. One for us, for as architects is to try to get our client the most efficient floor plates. Uh, and we have to work with the shape of the, of the lot, also the amount of concrete necessary to support a, a, a building with these dimensions, as well as having the problem with a blank wall facing north. Um, the structure is a, con is a concrete construction up to the 43rd floor. And then what is the, uh, the, <coughs> the, the bulkhead that contains the mechanical rooms as well as the coolant tower and the water tank, as a, we change it or the engineer change it to, to, to steel. Uh, the building is a curtain wall. It's a curtain wall, and we, we, <coughs> we, we treat the curtain wall uh, with two different textures. One is a very plain uh, a, uh, bar glass curtain wall. And in the cantilever portion, what we did is we introduced a horizontal bandage of aluminum and a fins to have two different textures in the, in, the, in the building. As well as having a flat face facing east, we created this cascading uh, glass balconies uh, and, and, and <coughs> facing 8th Avenue. Uh, and the beginning, the, the, the design was to have the same condition in, in the west side, but uh, and we have some problems trying to clean the building because uh, we could not reach some of the windows, so we decided it was easier to do it on the, on the 8th Avenue side. These are some of the views from the, from the corner apartments. Uh, this actually the actual pictures of the building. The building is almost finished. It's missing uh, two balconies over here, but pretty much it's, it's finished. Uh, and the 8th Avenue <coughs> podium, we also we introduced some horizontal things to create some texture uh, at the base of the building. And finally, we have uh, <coughs> pictures of the lobby. This is the entry. When we enter the lobby, this is the area, the seating area, and the concierge, and then you walk around to go to the elevator alcove. And we have, as a background, we have a waterfall. Um, as you can see, it's, this is the way we treated the that face and the north face, which is the blank wall. What we did is we um, combined uh, two colors, uh, a, a gray dark color and a light color, and we created these horizontal bands which match the height of the seals at the window. So that we have some kind of continuity between the curtain wall and, and this blank wall. And then we changed to this, this portion of the building where the elevators are to a solid, and gray wall, solo to play with the volumes. Uh, because what's a very, uh, we were very concerned about how this concrete wall was gonna look at the end of the day. Um, so this is the building. So I wanna give the microphone to, to Professor Israel Seignac to explain the, the structure. Thank you. 